Betsy. It is season one, episode one of the Front Porch Book Club, Woo-hoo! our very first episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, we're off and running. I know, it's so fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> the Front Porch Book Club is a podcast that meets two times a month. We hope in this podcast we'll dig deep into the relationship between characters and the worlds they live in. Grab a book and some iced tea and join us on our front porch. So, Lenny, what is the first book we are going to discuss on the podcast? Well, our first book is actually written by Sarah Crawford, our niece. Um, (laughs) And today we're going to be discussing her book called Lessons from Better People. She just graduated from Syracuse University and her book was her undergraduate thesis based on her experiences in Europe between her junior and senior year of college. Sarah had a much more exciting summer between her junior and senior year in college than I think either of us did. (laughs) Well, we certainly weren't either one of us writing a book. So she's pretty incredible. And we are two proud aunts. Yeah, (laughs) that's very true. (laughs) The book is basically into two parts. The first is her leaving college and her boyfriend, who you will not like. (laughs) <laughs> and going to spread her wings. <laughs> it must be said who she also does not like and breaks up with. Absolutely. And the real name is probably not used. Right. And she leaves her college and she enters an experience abroad. And so the first part is this internship. And then she also goes to Lockerbie. And that's the second part of it, where she experiences firsthand the lives and the experiences of the people of Lockerty when Pan Am flight was bombed about 30 years ago. The bomb killed everyone on board and some people on the ground. And 35 of those people were Syracuse students. So Syracuse has this big remembrance week on campus. Sarah really did a lot of research about the person that she was remembering And so she talks a lot about his work and really lives with a family there for several days. And so the second part has to do with those experiences. But Nancy, neither one of us were writing books (laughs) during our (laughs) senior and senior year of college. So what were you doing during college, either internships or summers? Because I didn't have those experiences. You know, one of the things I really love about higher education now with this newer generation is that more students are being exposed to study abroad. I did not know anyone in my little Pennsylvania State University college that went anywhere for a summer abroad experience, like literally no one I knew. And I knew a lot of people. Most of us were just getting summer jobs to help defray the costs of college, either living expenses or tuition, but no one was doing summer abroad experiences. And I I do think it's really fabulous that so many students have that opportunity The furthest I went during the summers in college is I had a job at Hershey Park, which I did love. I adored that job. You did love that job. (laughs) (laughs) It might be one of the favorite jobs I've ever had. (laughs) You got to wear those dilly boppers on your head. And I I looked good in them too. Um, (laughs) And manage a store. Yes, the chocolate house where we sold $75 bars of chocolate. That's not better that than that. Huge. That's fantastic. Yeah, it, it does it really doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> yeah, I did love Hershey Park, but I do think a summer abroad experience maybe would have been even more eye-opening than shilling chocolate <laughs> to the to the tourists. <laughs> Did you do anything exciting in in your summers that you can think of? No. You know, I I worked as a telemarketer and isn't that quite the job, but this was before lots of people were doing it. And I sat in a place where it was just swarming with flies and I hate, (laughs) I, I can't stand to kill like bugs in the house or anything, but I got this fly swatter. 
and I would aim at like killing a hundred of these a day. And that's what I remember that summer. Wow. And then I kind of got over that fear (laughs) 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 of killing things. Yeah. So, I mean, for her to have this experience abroad, not only just to really spread her way, first of all, get a professional job. You know, neither one of us had those professional jobs. She had a professional job where she worked and she worked at a publicity firm. And that's all in her her book about what she learned just about herself growing into a professional. She said this was her first professional job. So to have that experience before you graduate, what does that mean? What does it look like? How do I fit into the world of work? That's all that first part of her book. And, you know, most of us at that time, we didn't have that experience until we graduated. I do remember the cognitive dislocation of moving into a professional job and trying to figure out, oh, I now have a desk. This is my computer. Do I sit here for eight hours? Can I get up and talk to people? How do I make small talk? I mean, it's just such a different, it, for me, it was such a different experience. Now, I did I did have an internship during the last semester of my senior year that was a, a full-time job internship. And in fact, during my sophomore year, I did an internship too. So I did have some of those experiences, but it is such a different life being in an office, working with people who seem so old, they they might as well be your parents. You have nothing in common with them. Are they going to come tell you to put on a jacket because it's chilly in the air conditioning? I mean, it's just, <laughs> I think it, it can be really hard. And I think she really described the angst of young adulthood. So there's the whole fitting in, in into an office situation. There's trying to figure out who you are what you're about, how people see you, how you want to present yourself. And she captures it with a lot of sarcasm as well. And it it makes me want to use old people terms like, the book was just marvelous how it described young adulthood. (laughs) But but it really did bring that back. Did did her writing catapult you back into that phase of your life at all? Yeah. Being around people that weren't your own age, you spend your entire life from kindergarten being around people that are your own age and in college. And then you step out of that world and all of a sudden you're just in with people of all different ages. So I think anybody reading this book is going to, oh my golly, I remember that. I remember graduating and getting out there and trying to figure out how do I fit into this? I know how I did it in college, but this is a totally different experience. These people don't know me. (laughs) They don't know all the things that I can do or what I've done. And, and it's just when you said like, is this my desk? Is this where I sit? I mean, all of that stuff is kind of covered in her book. And I've said this to her. I like the transparency of it. And I think People that are just getting out there, these are the same experiences that a lot of people have, and they can see themselves in her writing. Yeah. So I really appreciated that she just put it out there because I don't know that I ever read anything that is about that unique time in your life and that unique experience of kind of coming into the world of work and adulthood and professional life the way that she wrote about it in this book. Yeah, even the little segment where it looks like, oh, everyone seems to be going for lunch. I uh, I don't have anyone to go with. Uh, and then two of her new colleagues rescue her from that situation. I Both mean, kind just- of young people who probably remembered what that was like. Yeah, because at college, you just you always knew who you were going to eat with. Well, you all went to the cafeteria at about the same time. And you're right. always meeting up with people after class or your roommates or different friends. All of a sudden, oh, I have lunch to do. Where do I go? Yeah. <laughs> Where does yeah. that happen? <laughs> Oh, what do I do? Plus, she's in a foreign country, so that's a lot more to figure out. 
But those young yeah. people, there were two young, young guys. Well, first of all, Sarah's very pretty. So I'm sure they, that was not a hardship for them <laughs> to say, Sarah, let's go to lunch together outside down the street a little bit so that and they made that a weekly affair for Sarah so that she would have at least somebody to eat with once a week (laughs) but all of that just those experiences just help you grow so much just finding out from her how that experience in her writing how that experience impacted her life I thought was interesting I loved how she you talked about how she is very transparent in her writing. Mm-hmm. I loved how in different points she would say w- things like, well, this is the way I've always done things, but it doesn't seem to be working here. Or, <laughs> yes, <she does. laughs> or why do I always do this? It doesn't work here any better than it has anywhere else in my life. <laughs> I mean, there's just a lot of kind of self-reflection and, and she just takes us along on the journey where, you know, you read this and, and there is, you, I just really appreciated the fact that she put just herself out there like that so that other people could say, yep, I felt like that too. Yep. I know what she's experiencing and it is humorous in some ways it's painful <laughs> in other ways yeah. because it's, it's when you're growing like that, there's, there's some growing pains to that. And it is uncomfortable and it is hard. And, and she just is just really transparent about that. I really appreciate that. Now, Nance, you have done way more traveling than I have uh, abroad. Like I have gone on cruises and I'll visit the islands, but I haven't gone to Europe. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You've gone over there. The little bit of traveling that I do have done, I do believe changes us. But what, how do you think travel has changed you? Oh, that's such a great question. Here's the thing, Lynn. I think we were really lucky to grow up with a mother who really valued travel. So no matter where we lived, she was interested in exposing us to the community we lived in. But far, far beyond that, she always planned wonderful summer vacations for us. She did. And yeah, yeah and we traveled all over the United States uh, on doing, a dime on a dime yeah yes, yeah we these did. were not luxury no, luxurious on a dime. vacations here's our camper <laughs> right and we will eat beef stew out of a can every night if we have to but we did yes. it and the sandwiches will be packed in the cooler yep for 12 <laughs> hours a day can yes, you believe traveling it? and sometimes without air conditioning crazy But we did it. And mom did expose us to all of that. And what a wonderful gift she gave us. And I think that that really sparked for all three of us a real interest in travel that we've passed down to our children. Sarah gets it, I think, from our brother. I think the thing about travel is it does force you to get out of your own little bubble of your own world, your own concerns the ways that you do things or your community does things. And it somehow burns away all of these things that aren't very important ultimately. And you really understand what humans have in common. Mm -hmm. You look around and sure, you know, the houses might look different. The way people interact might be different. But at the core, you see people who have built communities for themselves, who love one another, who would give anything for their children to have a good life, who are struggling with how to find meaning in life, how to make a contribution. And you realize everything else is window dressing, really. There are so many different ways that people live and and people can be, but at the heart, we're all the same. I just think it's so valuable for, you know, even if it's just travel over to the next town or to a different part of your state, it's so great to be exposed to that unfamiliarity paired suddenly with the familiarity of just being human. I would agree with you. 
as you were talking there, I thought of different experiences that we had. You know, we're we're from the north. We traveled into the south. That seemed very different. I remember, and of course, these were late 60s, early 70s, and life there seemed different in a lot of ways. And it was yeah. different in a lot of ways. I remember, you know, one of the things that struck me is what you said about we're all the same. And that was probably my biggest takeaway is even from a child or a youth's perspective of there's good people everywhere and we have more similarities and commonalities than we do differences. The love and appreciation of different people, different cultures, different ways of living. Although, you know, give me a McDonald's hamburger any day over some of the other food (laughs) that we would see along the way. Uh, Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah, I'm one of those travelers. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> At least back in the day I was. I, I might be a little bit more adventuresome now, but I kind of <laughs> like American food. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, it does it does bring humanity to surface. And when I see things on the news from other cultures or things going on around the world, I think first of we are all part of the human race what is going on with them and how would that affect me if I was in that situation? Cause I could be in that situation and people are in that situation. So I think you, you gain a better perspective of seeing people and their humanity and all the shared experiences that we do have. I like this quote from Mark Twain that refers to travel. He wrote travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry and narrow mindedness. And many of our people need it sorely on these accounts. Broad, wholesome, charitable views of men and things cannot be acquired by vegetating in one little corner of the earth all one's lifetime. (laughs) Wow. Isn't that great? Yeah, that is. That's, uh, wow, Mark Twain. He did some traveling, I think. Yes, he traveled to Europe, in fact. Yeah. Yeah. A Connecticut uh, Yankee in King Arthur's court is one of the famous things he wrote. Yeah. How interesting. I've never heard that quote before, but that does say a lot about getting out of your space and having a different experience. And it does, it does combat prejudice and bigotry or just sort of this Americanism, like we're better than other people kind of. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I have to say that I have traveled and you probably have too with Americans and the things that come out of their mouth aren't so very pretty. Oh, And I remember yeah. being in Mexico, a part of a tour group and, and being mortified at what someone was saying to someone else's culture and their people and their experience. So <laughs> travel can change you, but it can, it, it can bring a mirror to, the ugliness that some people have, but it does, it does show you the travel in and of itself doesn't change you, but hopefully it does. Hopefully it brings out something more positive. Well, I think it is a good point that travel is not a magic elixir because some people travel and they just carry their prejudice and bigotry and preconceived notions with them and are blind to what is happening around yeah. them. I think probably that travel needs to be combined with a humility, maybe openness. and a willingness to open up. Open to someone else's culture and experience. Well, and that's what I liked about the second half of Sarah's book, because in the second half, she travels to Lockerbie, Scotland, and she is very open to learning about the experiences of the people who survived that plane crashing into their village and killing some of the villagers, experiencing what it meant to that community and how they have taken that experience and turned it into something beautiful. It was that part of the book. So the first part of the book, I was laughing, 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 Uh, remembering my young adult self and enjoying her experience of trying to figure out the world. The second half, 
I'm crying, crying, crying in her depiction of this terrorist event and the humanity of the people in Lockerbie, their willingness to open their arms to her, but also all of the ways that they open their arms to turn this tragedy into something meaningful. Yeah, this is this is the toughest part of the book. I would say for her, you know, continual growth, she gets to live with a family while there. And so that helps to mold her and change her and and have a insider's look, not just, oh, let's go to this placard, let's go to this site, let's go to this church, but an insider's look on the experience of what had happened. One of the standouts for me was the washerwoman who, oh my goodness, Nance, I didn't really want to cry on this, but. Uh, well, it's very moving, uh, Lenny. Just that this lady, you know, like, what can you do? This plane is decimated. Yeah. What can you do? Everyone died. Um, and she thought, I'll wash the clothes in the suitcases. So when these loved ones get back the the suitcase, that the clothes are clean yeah. and they look nice. And her experience yeah. is doing that. I, it's such a beautiful gesture, yeah. right? I mean, that's one thing. Well, a couple people helped her, I guess. But but that's one thing that she could do, you know? And what a lovely gift that was. Yeah. And one of the suitcases that she washed was one of the Syracuse students. Oh. But, you know, she had such a wonderful experience there. And the we'll have to ask her more about that when she joins us. Because it was very moving and and they really did a lovely job of embracing her into their community. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this book will make you laugh out loud and this book will make you cry <laughs> out loud too. <laughs> Obviously, Sarah is a, a very gifted writer and she's really been writing for some time. I know she wrote some newspaper articles for your local newspaper yeah. when she was just in high school. I know she won some awards for some of her fiction writing she did at Syracuse. And now this, which I guess is probably the longest piece that she's written, but she's really honed some beautiful skills. Uh, one of the things I really enjoy is the way that she captures people so that as a reader, you feel like you know them in a finger snap. You you're like, oh, okay, I know who yep, that I is. Think I, that guy figured out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so an example of this is uh, speaking of, I've got that guy figured out. There's uh, one character that she meets at. Let's see. I guess she's fly. She, she flying out of Dulles, maybe in D.C. or National. Anyway, so she's she's leaving the United States in any event, and another student wanders over to her. She writes, he couldn't have been older than 21 like me by the looks of it, but his slack jaw and dark eyes that darted around the airport as if he was expecting an assassin to come up and pistol whip him <laughs> had me assuming that our paths would never normally cross back on campus. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I read that and I was like, oh, <laughs> I do know that guy. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I I think he went to my college <laughs> he too. He went to all of our colleges. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, his his experience abroad was very different than Sarah's. I'm not sure he even had an internship, did he, or did he just go to have some fun? I don't know that he even worked. Well, it, he had one, but he said mostly it was a ruse for him to have cover to drink a lot of beer away from oh, his father right. that yeah, summer. That, that was. <laughs> Sarah, on the other hand, talks about how she had tried to scrape money together and how this was so important to her and all the ob obstacles that she really worked hard to overcome to have this opportunity. And then she runs into this guy. <laughs> yeah, she did a lot to get the money. She actually had to get a scholarship to, to do that study abroad. So we got a lot out yeah, of her that's experience. Right. The other thing I really enjoyed about her writing is she knows how to keep the reader turning the pages. She has great ends to her chapter 
that make you want to just then immediately dive into the next chapter, you know, really, really good forwards at the ends, ends of chapters. So one of them, I thought, uh, just as an example, so the last paragraph of one chapter, all right, so maybe it wouldn't be the best summer of my life, but I'd settle for an unforgettable one. And I just thought, wow, that turn of phrase, you know, summarizing everything up to that point. And then that turn of phrase is just like, oh, what? Okay. Well, so what, what's that going to be about? You know, so just really great writing, oh I think. Goodness. So talented. Our niece. Ah, you know yeah. what? We're going to get her on this podcast. And the next thing that she writes to, she can come back. We're going to follow <laughs> her. <laughs> Anything she writes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Anything. Yeah. Well, so that will be our next episode. Sarah is going to join us and we will have some questions for her about the book that she wrote. I know. I'm looking forward to it. So in the future, for people who are listening, this is pretty much going to be how our podcast will go. One episode will review the book that we've read. And then the second episode, we'll invite someone on to discuss the book with us. When we can, we'll get the author. Otherwise, we'll get people who maybe have some specific perspective or viewpoint on some aspect of the book. If listeners have questions they would like us to ask our guests, you can go to our website at frontporchbookclub.com, all one word, frontporchbookclub.com, and you can send us an email with any comments or suggestions or questions for guests that you have. At the website, every episode will also have links to anything that we talk about. So for instance, Sarah's thesis is located at a Syracuse website that is very long. I will now attempt to read, but there will also be a link on our website that will take you directly to it. So Lessons from Better People is available at https slash slash honors.syr.edu slash showcase slash thesis slash Sarah hyphen Crawford. And Sarah is S-A-R-A-H hyphen C-R-A-W-F-O-R-D. So that's the URL. But again, if you go to our website at frontporchbookclub.com and to this episode, you will get a link to go directly to her book. And it's available for free at the Syracuse University website. Okay. Well, that was our first episode. I'm looking <laughs> yep. forward to many more books and many more authors more laughter and we probably shed a few tears too <laughs> probably <laughs> so stop by the front porch book club next time in which sarah will join us to discuss her book we'll see you then nance this was really fun lenny i know <laughs> <laughs> all right see you then okay take care <laughs> bye-bye bye-bye